Hey everybody, welcome to the Combi Dog channel. My name is Jonathan. Come and follow along as my wife Marissa and I take on the project of building an off-grid cabin in the mountains of North Central Idaho. Really, this is becoming a series on how to overcome the unforeseen obstacles of building an off-grid cabin. This episode takes a look at the current challenge we are facing. Our first real challenge was to get a D6 dozer across this creek to cut out a building pad from the mountain above. Getting permission from the powers that be to drive the dozer across the creek was no easy task in and of itself, but thankfully we got it done last fall. This creek, as tame as it appears in this video, taken in the fall, looks quite different during the spring runoff. This is what it looks like now in mid-June. Last fall, we spotted Chinook salmon making their way upstream over the creek's rocky bottom their dorsal fins sticking out of the water. Now I'm not saying that the D6 couldn't cross the creek in this torrent, but it surely would have been a bit more challenging. So what's so important about the creek's current level is because all this extra water comes from somewhere. Most of it is likely from the melting snowpack, but also from the near daily rain we are currently experiencing. The real noteworthy point is that some of it on making its way here is the source of our current challenge. I'm standing at the foot of our driveway at the edge of the main road coming up the hill. As you can see, a couple of mini streams are busy cutting troughs in the roadway as they make their way towards the creek. Last fall, the D6 graded this roadway and leveled a couple of truckloads of gravel to smooth the surface. Most of that gravel has been washed away. But with all this water comes the most beautiful, lush shades of green. It is absolutely breathtaking. Our pad, on the other hand, is a wet, muddy mess. There are dozens and dozens of small springs popping out all over the cut hillside, draining down onto the pad. While the D6 was still here, we had its rippers bust up the rocky ground around the wellhead, creating a hole. From this hole, we'll install the well pump's pitless adapter. Little did we know that the hole would soon become a small pond, as Numa is now investigating. The water is 40 inches deep, which is the depth of the prescribed pitless adapter. So the first order of business is to get rid of all this water. To help with this task, we brought in an excavator to dig a trench, hopefully shedding the bulk of the water down over the hillside. I was a bit concerned that the excavator would get stuck coming in, as I had already been stuck in the mud once. The mini ice got right to work. It was amazing to see the trench instantly fill with water and still there was water seeping through the sides of the trench or up to the ground or both onto the pad continuing on its original path to well pretty much everywhere including flooding the hole around the wellhead. And this is another facet of the problem. The ground near and around the wellhead is basically solid rock. So once the water's there, it just stays. We really wanted the mini X to dig the trench as deep as the hole around the wellhead and channel it through an even deeper trench down over the hillside. But alas, it was simply too hard to break through. Still, it was nice to see the volume of water that did make its way through the newly formed channel. Here it created another pond and marshland before continuing on down the mountain. I can't really estimate how much water this is, but it is a lot a lot of water that would have otherwise been flooding over the pad. Now this may be a foreshadowing of an upcoming problem. The four pink flags you can see represent the proposed corners of our future cabin. I had the excavator make a pilot hole at each corner. In one hole we had to go five feet to hit subgrade. In another corner we only went six inches before hitting solid rock. So what will our foundation look like? Piers, perhaps a step stem wall, or will we have to bring in that rock breaker after all? I guess we'll find out soon enough. The excavator was able to make a shallow ditch leading away from the wellhead. The best it could do was about a foot deep. Still, that dropped the water level around the wellhead down to about 28 inches. We are hoping to install the well pump in the very near future. I am guessing that we are going to need a sump pump to drain the water away from the casing while we install the pitless adapter. 
The final task for the Mini X was to dig this shallow trench across the driveway, redirecting the water off the main road and down over the hill. Hopefully this will prevent further erosion of the road. We will still likely need to dig the trench deeper and install a culvert, but at least it is working for now. And of course we could use a couple more truckloads of gravel to smooth out the roadway. In Idaho, you always hate to say no to rain, but man are we hoping it stops soon. We are super anxious to get going on our cabin project, but right now everything is so wet and muddy, there is really very little we can do. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this part of the project. We hope to see you in the future as we continue this off-grid adventure. If you haven't already done so, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. And remember, keep building your dreams.